In this video, I'm going to show you how I grew this three-leaf cutting of the Hoya Serpent into this beautiful plant. Look at the difference. Look at the difference. And to this day, I am still shocked that this is just one plant. I did not like stick more plants in here or propagations. She just branched everywhere. It's like so incredible, this plant. So incredible. But wait, there's more! Three months ago, I did propagate this plant and all the cuttings in this pot of pawn, and I'm gonna share the results today, so stick around for that. A lot to cover. It's gonna be my experience, you know, looking at the propagation journey. And please, can someone answer this question for me? Why did so many people back in the day say that the Hoya Serpens needs high humidity? Because I'm gonna say it doesn't it doesn't. Who said that? In my opinion, it is a very easy plant to grow. And so I'm gonna include a few clips, some pictures, but oh my gosh, let's bring back that picture. I don't know what that wrist thing was. <laughs> let's bring back that picture. So this picture is from July, 2021. So two and a half years ago, I was honestly scared. You know, I had a bunch of hoys at the time, but the humidity factor scared me a lot, just based on what I heard from like other people at the time. I didn't do anything different. I like stuck it in this pond substitute. So if y'all don't know, I used to use this pond substitute. So it was zeolite, lava rock, and I think in the place of pom this might be wrong, pumice, they use little tiny pieces of bark. So in my experience, I found that this substrate did a good job, but if you don't keep on top of the watering, if you don't fill up the reservoir when you're supposed to, it does dry out. And for me, I like to keep my Hoyas relatively moist throughout the whole entire time they're in that substrate. And so getting it in July, putting it in that pond substitute, I was shocked at how fast this grew. Shocked. I think I have a picture three months after I potted it up and she's going up the trellis that I put on her. And then I think in March 2022, so I think that's eight months after. I mean, you can see that she is not a slow plant. The humidity in my room stays between, well, at the time, 35% to 55%. Now it's shifted a little bit just because I think there's a lot of plants in here. So it's now 40 to 60%. So not super high humidity. And yeah, was it even like a year? Was it even a year? Like she turned into that. She turned into that. If y'all are new here, 2022 towards the end was the year of the spider mite, AKA my whole entire collection got infested with spider mites. I tried to like isolate plants that had a lot of spider mites, the serpents included, put them all in a bin, introduce beneficial mites. I use a persimilis with great success. But the thing is, I kind of like left it in there for a little bit and I, we don't talk about it. I think I left the serpents in there for like six months. I don't really talk, I mean, I bring up this period a lot, but I don't really like talk about like how I felt. Like it, it was such a hard time for me. I didn't really want to show anyone like my plants. I didn't want to take pictures of plants during that period. And so I don't have a lot of pictures. I don't know. She looks so good like this though. I want to take her out of the uh, bark situation <laughs> and put her in actual pond. I never propagated this plant. Look at this guys. Look at all these roots. So I'm gonna keep whatever is on. Yeah, everything looks good. We're just gonna put her in. Now I'm just adding some pond. So this seems pretty impossible to untangle. Yeah, do you know why? Because I kept putting it around the trellis and every time I did that, there was an offshoot from above and then those tendrils I wrapped around so they're kind of tangled. So I'm just gonna put another wire trellis. So for now, just a small one and then I'm gonna put a big one over top. Looks like a hot mess, oh my gosh. I don't know guys. <laughs> You know, it has that like vibe of like overgrown, like ivy on like an old house. Like, do you see that? I see that. Let's go with that. At this point, I was getting a little frustrated because I'm not sure at that point if I already repotted it into actual issues of pond, but I know I added a taller trellis. I was wrapping the vines so it could climb it. For some reason, I don't remember why, I had this Hoya pretty far from a grow light. And um, I'll include a clip here. This was May of 2023. Yeah, I don't know why I did that. Hoya Serpens. She is still here, um, but she hasn't grown. She started to grow a little bit. Like some of this is new, but like barely anything. Um, again, I, you know how I always say, blast your Hoya with light. Um, 
in order to get like fast growth. So again, I want to experiment um, with giving a lot of my Hoyas less light. This is under grow light. However, it's probably only getting 500 to 1000 foot candles for 14 hours and it has not done a thing. I'm gonna have to find another shelf. Okay, let's take a walk. I'm just gonna show you where she lives so y'all have an idea. He currently lives there. So the grow light is over here. And to the naked eye, it looks like it's getting a lot of light, but I just want to show you. Yeah, 500. Okay, 500 to 600. So down here, less. This is 400 actually, 400 to like 750. Whereas before, she lived up here with all these other Hoyas. And these Hoyas are getting like 2,000 to 3,000 foot candles and yeah. 2300 and so i'm thinking I might move her under i'm just i'm just shifting things i'm trying to put it through so she's right over here um let's do a measure so 2000 to 3000 and even the ones that are not directly under they're getting a thousand so I'm happy with that. Yeah, I mean, that's something that I kind of recommend all the time, just to adjust as your plant grows or if your plant's not growing, just, just use your critical thinking and like obviously seeing that this plant wasn't growing a lot and like the foliage, I'm touching the foliage now, like it's, the leaves are firm. It's not like it's dying. It's just like not growing fast. And that was just a change because it was one of my fastest growing Hoyas until I moved her away from the grow light. So if y'all are wondering why I keep telling y'all to blast your Hoyas with light, that is the reason. <laughs> Anyhow, see how passionate I was about light and how I think it's you know, so important for Hoyas? I took propagations. I, I really wanted a trailing serpents. Like I love the look. It is so beautiful. And yeah, so I took propagations, put them in Lashes Upon again. And yeah, I'll include some clips from the initial chop, a few updates in between, and then I'm gonna show you. I'm so, y'all, are not gonna be disappointed. I'm so excited to show y'all. The planter, it looks so good. Uh, okay, I wanted to look at my Hoya Serpens. It is a stunning plant, y'all. And I'm gonna just take a few like cutting and just put it in one of these. Uh, the reason why I'm doing that, I kind of like the Serpens trailing. The one I have is up a trellis. Let me just grab it to show you. You can see that she's a little cutie. Um, she's working on climbing this trellis here. And I, like I said, like this was a Hoya that I experimented in lower light conditions and she didn't do a thing. She didn't die, but she just didn't do anything. I'm just gonna take a few cuttings from various places and we're just gonna put them in pond. I don't know, I'm obsessed with the Matilde. And so I just want like a trailing serpent. I feel like that would look so cute. And I'm gonna do like two leaf cuttings, I think. Because if y'all remember, and future Kevin, if you could find a picture, this plant started out as like three leaves and it was like a very, very short stem with like minimal roots. And now she's like this big beast here. So, oh, I'm sorry. I know you started growing again. I don't know y'all. It's hard because there's some like fresh, like new growths that might not survive. So I'm trying to find like an older one, like probably one of these ones in the center. Like this one looks okay. Everything is tangled. Everything is tangled. I think I'm just gonna take cuttings from various plants, so there. Okay, also, remember when this plant was like new to the scene and everyone was like, oh yeah, you need like super high humidity. You need to keep it in like a mills bow. Like, do y'all remember that? That's not a thing. And I mean, I guess people have success with it in mills bows, just because plants generally just grow better in high humidity. But like, yeah, why was that a thing? I don't understand. Okay, I'm just gonna make a chop here. Yeah, I don't know. I think that was such a strange piece of advice because y'all know my conditions and look at what this Hoya looks like. It doesn't need high humidity, y'all. I guess I'll just like push the cuttings through and then fill the water line all the way to the top. And I'm just making cuttings that are like this size. This small little cute stem. Okay, let's pop them in. Oh my God. 
I don't know. This is so cute. They look so cute. Okay, let's do this. I'm also cutting off um, the peduncles because I feel like it's going to take a lot of energy. Sometimes the plant just like kills it off eventually. Now you can do another strategy where you put just these cuttings in like a prop box because there's just like constant humidity around like the entire plant or cutting. You all know that I hate prop boxes with a passion. Like it does the job, but like I always have issue acclimating it to my environment and it just frustrates me so much. And so so yeah, I've always like wanted to find a way that would work for me where you don't need to use prop boxes. And then obviously I learned a lot of plants don't necessarily need high humidity. I know this might look like overkill y'all, but I have a sneaky suspicion that not a lot of these are gonna survive. Don't know, like I'm gonna have to keep a close eye on these. But are we down to the last vine? We are, okay, here we go, here we go. Wow, I like really cut the perfect amount cause it looks pretty full here. I usually put a little bit more pond, but it seems that they're okay. Okay, do you see the water? It is just like at the surface. Um, okay, so one last check. There are some that are like not like super secure, but anyhow, I'll just keep an eye on this. We're right under grow light again, 2000 to 3000 foot candles, and then yeah. Now, this is where I'm going to talk about my strategy when it comes to propagating, especially when the propagations of Hoyas have a stem that is like so short. You need to make sure these stay consistently wet. And so my strategy, because I knew I was going to get busy, was to fill the reservoir all the way to the top. Top, top, top. Uh, touching the leaves. Touching the leaves. Doing that in conjunction with having it under grow light. 14 hours. 3,000 foot candles. That, for me, works. And it's worked. I'll, I'll show you more after this because there's more. But that, I'm so happy that I don't think, I think there might've only been one. Yeah, okay, I saved the leaf because I want to show you. There was one that died, so I saved the leaf because y'all know that I show you everything on this channel. It's hard to see because there's a lot in here. So that kind of shows you how I'm still keeping the reservoir pretty high. I'm just gonna empty the reservoir and just refill it um, just so I don't spill anymore. I just wanna show you. Do you see? And the new growth is the lighter green. So obviously you can see the darker green, which um, for the most part uh, is coming from the cuttings, but you can see here, like this is brand new. All of this right over here. Look at these babies right over there. Um, yep, that's new. You can see that's the beginnings over here. So, I don't know. I know it's still so small, uh, but I just want to show you my method and that it works. This is actually pretty good. <laughs> like, in my experience, the Serpents is a fast grower. Um, I know other people have, you know, a harder time with it, but it, for me, grows like a weed. It really does. So here is the update with that. I need to show you the mother plant. I didn't think this plant could get more full but because i made cuttings it promoted new growth at different nodes and so there was just multiple branching look <laughs> and yeah again you can see with the bright green you can see the new growths it's like really embedded in here blending in with the with the new plant and like now there's more up here like she's really just branched you can see like those tiny tiny new leaves at what point do you start decreasing the water level um because like they've grown root systems evidently like you can see that there's new growth there must be new roots which is true i still keep the water pretty high like i go past the maximum you all saw that i was spilling water um so it is still kind of up there but maybe a little bit less like up here as opposed to the maximum which is down here which is just wild to me i don't know i feel like the serpents likes wet conditions 
so I don't know what the last clip was. I, I still need to pull the clips all together, um, but <laughs> it is so incredible. Pretty sure it's a three month up update, if not four months. Look at this. So remember when she was itty bitty. This is not a slow Hoya, guys. This is not a slow Hoya. Just think about the Hoya Matilde and how I always talk about how fast that is. The Hoya Matilde is a hybrid between the Hoya Serpens and Hoya Carnosa. And I mean, it makes sense. Like, Serpens is so fast. Serpens is so fast. And so it makes sense that the Matilde is like super, super fast. Wow. Okay, so I still have this under grow light. So you can see bleaching a little bit. It's hard because sometimes the leaves, they might just be new. You know, they haven't hardened off yet. I would say getting a thousand to two thousand foot candles right now. And I can't count what was the success or not. I can like try to dig, but it's it's impossible. Like, I can't even tell. <laughs> Look at the trailing. The trailing's beautiful. Look at all these nuts. This is nuts. Wow. <gasps> Three months. Three months. And I said it from the beginning. Well, I kind of have the opinion where, like, you can have a plant and you could have it grow rapidly. But was that, like, luck? Or is it just the plant's a fast grower? And so I really want to see how it was going to do. And it's the same. It's so fast. I, I'm so shocked at this growth. I don't even know if I'm feeding this. I think maybe recently because there's so much, I think I've been do doing a dilute nutrient solution. Again, I'll talk about that in a bit, but let me just... See, this one's darker because she is against my south facing window. She does have a grow light right above it, but I mean, these leaves, which are darker here, they're pretty far from, from the grow light, whereas like these leaves up here. So yeah, much so much growth especially from like propagating and again like she started branching everywhere everywhere and i chopped it like and so let's dive in to the condition again this is just based on my experience to stress again my experience is only growing this in this pond substitute and also the shoes of pond from that one tiny plant with three leaves into this, and then propagating the plant again three months ago, putting them in Lushu's upon. Yeah, so temperature is always the same. So between 60 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Humidity in the past year and a half, I would say is between 40 to 60%. Obviously higher in the summer, lower during the winter. The lighting, probably one of the most important ones. The lighting i think the serpents can do okay will still grow at medium light conditions i wouldn't recommend putting this plant under low light conditions that's a no-no but in medium light conditions i feel like it wouldn't grow as fast and so i usually i mean with all my hoyas i say a thousand to two thousand foot candles now i know you might see you know bleaching from the grow light in the leaves i can't tell if it's just like a new leaf so did I even finish what I was saying? Bright and dark light and a thousand to two thousand for candles. You could probably go less, but that is just my preference and what, you know, I'm going to tell you how I grew these. There was a short period of time where the light was like 500 to 600 foot candles. I think that was the clip from a year and a half ago. But ever since, it's been on average a thousand to two thousand foot candles for 14 hours a day, always under grow light. Again, this one's against my south facing window as well, but it is winter and we don't get much light. Um, even though it's a south facing window, there are two buildings across from me that block the view sometimes. Feeding and watering. Okay, so y'all know me and like, I'm just thinking about 2021. I over fertilized everything. So I think I was just using my Leka nutrient solution and I'll include it here. So this Leka nutrient solution with my plants in pond and the pond substitute, like I was just doing the full blast. I wasn't flushing, like I was just filling it every time it needed to be filled. I wasn't really paying attention, but all I know is that I know at that point I was I was changing my nutrients for my plants and liquid frequently, and therefore I had a lot of leftover nutrient solution. I didn't want to get rid of it, so I would feed my pond plants, whether that's anthuriums, hoyas, with this nutrient solution, and at the time I wasn't diluting it. These days I do dilute it, so I do like a one part nutrient solution, one part water, so it's not as strong, and I mainly do that like once a month. Every time it needs to be watered in between, I just do plain tap water and watering. Okay. I find this plant is thirsty. It is so thirsty. Like again, this is one plant. This is one plant. And so like just thinking about how like the plants roots have grown so much from just one plant and it's just really sucking up all the water. Like I was shocked by it. And I know the other planter has a lot of 
plants in it. So obviously, you know, there's more roots from different plants, so they are taking up more water. But it's the same. It's the same. The reservoir, I have to keep an eye on this. I have this in a place where I can see it because... I would definitely forget about it. When I talk about keeping the substrate wet or watering the plant, again, my experience is only in Le Chusa Pond. I prefer pond so much, also Leco when it comes to growing Hoyas because there's fixed air pockets. When you have the fixed air pockets and the characteristics with Leca and Pond being able to hold on to a lot of water moisture, that is, in my opinion, like perfect for Hoyas. And so if we're looking at arid mix, just make sure it's chunky. When it's chunky, obviously it dries out faster, so you'd have to keep an eye on watering more. I would never recommend dense mixes when it comes to arid mixes. One thing that I have not achieved with this plant that I'm just itching, I have not been able to get blooms yet. And trust and believe everyone, there are peduncles everywhere. There are peduncles everywhere. They're everywhere. They're everywhere. Yeah, I don't know. It's, I think, this is my theory because like I've, observed a few more plants specifically hoyas and when it's like one plant and they start pushing out so many growth points because there's more vines and more plant like the plant needs to i said it's plant so many times it needs to channel nutrients and energy everywhere as opposed to one vine and a peduncle i think someone told me when they moved their hoya into like warmer like greenhouse conditions that's when it bloomed anyways going off my theory because it's happened with my what is it called uh, Silver Lady, oh my gosh, where there's peduncles everywhere, but it's just one plant and it vined everywhere, foliage-wise. Anyhow, I'm curious now that I have a bunch of separate plants in one planter, like I'm very curious to see if it'll bloom for me. Um, I mean, trailing versus climbing, I mean, it's pretty much the same. Like, you can see that she's, you know, also trailing. Um, this one, you can see that she will still push out foliage even though she's like not supported. And let me just grab her again. Again. Yeah, I mean, she's trailing. I'm not supporting her at all. So you can do both is another thing that I absolutely love about the Hoya Serpents. Definitely one of my favorites. Definitely one of my favorites. What are y'all's experiences with the Hoya Serpents? Oh, I love the text. The texture is everything. Okay, I want to do this video also because I'm gonna chop her again. I just, I'm so obsessed. You know me, love a plant. I'm gonna keep propagating it because I want more, but also, you know, just to learn, just to learn about the growth and you kind of build that knowledge base. So anyhow, I'm gonna chop her. I think I might like chop her maybe here. We'll see. I know I want it to be full like in the middle, but like, I think I have to chop her. I just want more. Watch, I'll chop her and y'all won't even. <laughs> see the difference. Okay guys, I will see you in the next one.